So one of the most tedious jobs when you're doing any kind of sampling of an instrument is looping the samples so that you can play them indefinitely. It just takes ages to kind of go through and find a good section. And if you're working in a program like Contact, it just kind of feels cumbersome because the wave editor is just horrendous to use. However, there is an easier way. And I've shared that way on this channel before through a program called Sample Robot. If you've missed that video, I will link to it below, but I showed you how Sample Robot can make the whole process of sampling so much more automatic, which in includes automatic looping. But what if you've already got some samples and you want to just automatically loop them all? You don't want to have to go re-record them all, you just don't want to have to loop them. Well, Sample Robot can definitely do that as well. You can import them all into a session, loop them up and get them ready for contact in no time. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. It's been a little while since I've posted a video. I've had a little bit of busyness going on in my life, but I'm back and I'm glad to be sharing this little tip with you. Now my channel, as I said, isn't a stranger to Sample Robot. I've definitely showed it here before. It's a program that I personally bought and I personally love. It's not something that I'm kind of spooking or anything, but I think it's well worth the investment that I ended up making on it. It's not cheap. It's a little bit of a pricey program, but it does some pretty cool stuff, particularly when you're sampling a lot. That whole process of sampling can be kind of mundane sometimes. So while Sample Robot definitely samples everything automatically for you if you haven't yet recorded your samples, check that video out linked below so that you can sort of see that in action. So the other thing it does is it can import files into the session and have them loop those automatically as well. That way you can kind of reprocess it, get it all automatically looped up and ready to go, and then send them to contact so that you don't have to worry about using that wave editor ever again. So let's see it in action. So if you're new to this channel, I have often in the past shared free sample libraries to Pianobook and you can actually download those for free. Recently, I opened up Pianobook to kind of do this video and I found out that I'm actually the featured samplist of the month, which is kind of cool. Uh, that was a bit of a surprise, a nice one indeed. But for today's example, I want to show you a library from one of the OGs of Pianobook and that is Stephen Tallamy. Stephen Tallamy has shared a lot of libraries in the past and worked quite closely with Pianobook for quite a while now and was there sort of right right towards the beginning, I believe. This particular library he released recently, which is a Korg MS-20 library, he's called it MS-20+, Plus because it can sort of do things that the MS-20 couldn't originally do. And it's a really wonderful library. Here it is, the MS-20+, Plus, and it's basically got a number of different sounds and you can kind of blend those all in. And then it also has a number of controls, so like the standard sort of ADSR controls, as well as a filter cutoff and that sort of thing as well, which is pretty cool. <laughs> cool library. The thing is, I was actually chatting to Stephen recently and uh, he was not looping any of the files in this library because frankly it just takes so long with so many groups to kind of go through and do that process. And it's very cumbersome in that wave editor as we've said. So he was asking me as someone who uses Sample Robot, how easy is it and can you import files and loop them up? And I was like, sure, let me give it a go and let you know how it goes. So when you download his library, you've got all these samples that are already laid out that he's recorded and obviously built the library from. And they're just a sort of different layer a different sound in each layer basically. So I thought I'll just grab them today as an example and show you how you can loop them all up. Now step one is to prepare the files correctly. Basically, Sample Robot is looking for WAV files or AIFF files, which is the Apple sort of lossless version of a WAV file. Sometimes though, you'll run into a problem when trying to import some files, as I did. And I actually ended up messaging Christian at Sample Robot to kind of find out what was going on. He said that basically when I was importing these WAV files, that sometimes the WAV files might not import correctly or come up with an error. And that might be because some of the metadata that's attached to them. So one way to kind of get around that is to import them into a program like Logic and export them either as a WAV or more likely an AIFF file. So for example, I took filter mod for the first sort of sample group and I just brought all of these in to Logic. If you drag and drop them into Logic and let go below, it should ask you, how would you like to manage these files? And if you go create new tracks, this is an important distinction. It is going to load up all the files down here. And most importantly is the sample name that was the original file is going to be copied across to the title of the track. This makes it so much easier to export later on, trust me. Now Stephen's samples are just beautifully laid out, all the same length, which probably were recorded by MIDI Trigger. 
and it's just made it very easy to kind of manage these files entirely. But what I can do in Logic, and you can probably do something similar in other doors, of course, highlight all of these, head up to File, jump into Export, and I've got two options. I can either export the 19 regions, which are all these individual blocks, one region, or 19 tracks. If you are gonna do tracks, I think it would be a good thing to bring the marker to your end point so that your sample lengths don't you know, last forever. So I'm just gonna do 19 regions for now. So in here, I would make sure that my save format is AIFF rather than WAVE or CAF. And I would just make sure that my name is always the region name and nothing else. As an example, it's showing you the file name will then remain the same file name that Stephen actually put in for him them himself. So that makes it nice and easy to use. Then I'll just hit export and it will go through and export the whole thing. That just gives you a fresh copy of all of the files in AIFF format, which is something that Sample Robot can read. It won't have any of the bad metadata that may have been causing an issue and you can start afresh and get those files imported. I found I had to do that because I was getting this kind of issue coming up. Something that either contact or Steven had put into the metadata was just throwing sample robots. So this kind of process of washing the samples, if you like, it worked. So, you know, like that's something to try if you're running into that issue as well. After that, you've got your files. You don't need uh, logic at all anymore. You can just open up sample robot in itself. Now, when you open up sample robot for the first time, it's probably going to bring up its standard stock template demo whatever version of a project if you like and you just can hit the minus to get rid of that and create a new project if it comes up asking you for a wizard as well it should look something a little bit like this you can just cancel that as well because this would take you through the, the process of starting a new sample set like sampling a new instrument you don't really want that so let's just cancel that so we'll come over to the project section and we're going to click plus to create a brand new project we'll pop in a name i'm just going to call this one test for now and that's created a new project. Then you wanna come down to the multi-sample section and this is talking about your layers. Think of this like your velocity layers. Now, in this case, I only need one velocity layer because Stephen's only recorded one velocity layer. So I would just create one layer and that layer is gonna be called something like filter mod, which is the same that Stephen called that first group of samples. So I'll do that now. I'll hit the plus button and create filter mod. And now that's given me a multi-sample group. So think of this like a layer and inside the project, is the layer. So if you have multiple velocity layers, you could put three different multi-sample layers in there and load it, the samples relevant to each layer. So I've just got my one. Now I need to add my samples. And this is where I come up to my menu at the top and I go import and I'm gonna import audio files. Now this section here is basically asking, what would you like to analyze from the file? So I know there are no loop formats in this file. I can just hit no loop because I know that there's not gonna be a loop file in here because that's something that Stephen didn't do for this library. And there's nothing baked in there at all from that point of view. The other thing as well, copying the file, I know that the files have been labeled with the file name. If you jump over here, you can see my files that I've got here from Stephen and they are A sharp one, A sharp two, A sharp three, C one, C two, so on and so on. Every sample has the name of the note that they should be attached to. So when I come back to sample robot, I need to make sure that I am copying the file name's root key so that it looks at the file name and copies that to the specific note. And the override section is just if you have any key samples already loaded in there, do you want to override them or keep the original ones and just skip over it? So that's really irrelevant right now because they're completely empty anyway. I'll leave this little checkbox on as well because we want to set the key names to the file name because the file name is that does need to be preserved. So I'm going to import there and then it's going to ask me where would I like to import from? I would find where I stored all of my files and I just need to make sure I select the right type of file. You can see here only the, the WAV or WAV file and the AI AIFF files are available. These obviously are .AIF files, so we'll need to switch that over. And now I can drag and highlight all of these and hit open. There we go, import done. Click OK and we can see all of our notes are now down here. We can also see them laid out on this keyboard. And if I was to press one of these, it would play that sample. So basically the way that Sample Robot now handles each one is an individual file and we have note in, note out points as well as loop in, loop out and crossfade points. And that's important, those last three. That's what we're sort of setting out now. Let's take this middle C sample, for example. If I hit the play down here and I just go play note, we'll be able to hear what the note sounds like. So we can see the note in starting there, right bang on the transient and the note out at the end of the sample. I could, if I want to be picky, move that in, or I could even use 
the automatic note out. But I'm just gonna leave it there for now and I'll explain more why in a second. Over here on the right though, I am gonna jump into my loop section and I'm going to turn loop off onto loop on. Now it's giving me a loop in and loop out section. Now it's done these automatically, not by any kind of automated scanning or reading or anything. It's just kind of thrown in and in and an out at that point. What Sample Robot will do then is it will, if you click to analyze and find a loop out point, it will look at where the loop in starts and try and find the next best spot to start that loop out. I would recommend setting the loop in point yourself. What I mean is you can drag this line to a particular point. And I always find it's better to not start at a transient or a loudest part of the waveform where you can see it really kind of peaking there and instead pick something a little bit more moderate and even. That gives the loop out a much better chance of finding something pretty decent. Now that we've got that point set, let's come to find loop out and let it analyze. And there we go, it's analyzed and found something that looks pretty similar and it reckons that that's gonna be a pretty decent loop. We also have this crossfade, so a little tiny crossfade that's gonna happen to crossfade into the beginning of the loop again. Now the great thing is you can listen to just this loop itself. If you come down here and click loop, it's gonna play the loop and let's have a listen now and see if it works. I think there's a little bit of a click there as it moves round to the next point. This could use with a little bit of finessing from the crossfade. So if I move the crossfade in a little bit to give it a little bit more of a crossfade, and you can hit the loop button and do this while you're, you're sort of doing it to so kind of adjust it as you go, but that will give it a little bit more of a smoother entrance. There we go, I think I've got it to a pretty good point, at least what I can hear at the moment. This is the great thing is it's automatically found it, but also it's way easier to dial it into perfection because these sliders are just easy to move around. A couple of my tips for this process. One is set your loop in point at a fairly even part of the waveform. That's trickier said on certain samples, of course. Some samples have a lot of vibrato or a lot of flutter and warping, and that's gonna be hard to find a particular point that's a little more even but if you can, that would be good. Two, when you set that loop out, listen back to the loop and make sure it sounds good. And if it doesn't, use the crossfade a little bit to just kind of smooth it over. Three, if you find that even after playing with the crossfade is just not quite good enough, you can move that loop point in again to a different spot, do the find loop out again, and have it reanalyze and see if that new section does a better job. That can often get away with the clicks and pops because sometimes the in point is not quite good enough and moving that in point is gonna give you a better seamless transition when looping. All right, I'm gonna remove this project now and I'm gonna load up a project that I've had open before. So this is actually the filter mod project that I have been working on for Steven, and I'm gonna be sending him back all these files so that if he wants to, he could create a new uh, version of the MS20 Plus library, like a version two that just has these looping samples in it. Each one you can see is looped. They have loop points all over the place. Some are longer, some are shorter, it all just depends. And that's the beauty of Sample Robot. It's doing the heavy lifting for you. You don't have to worry about that. Now, once you have all these samples, then you're ready to export them. And this is where Sample Robot has another little kind of cherry on the ice cream in a, in a way. I, th I think it's a nice little thing that it does here is it kind of trims the fat, so to speak. If you jump up to input export we're going to export the project and we're going to export it as a NI contact project this means the files are ready to be read by contact which means they'll read the loop points automatically and the wave editor will show your loop point so I go NI contact and at this point it goes how would you like these to be set now these files were originally recorded in 48 and 24 bits so I'm going to leave them as this is I often recommend recording at a higher frequency and then if you need to downsample later on you can do it here you can export at a lower sample quality the difference is obviously debatable there is definitely an audible difference between higher quality versus lower quality particularly when you're talking about extremes of either end but the other thing to consider as well is the higher the frequency in particular the more time stretching you can do 
the more elastic your sample can be. So if you sample at 96 rather than 48, it means you can stretch it to twice the length that it, that sample was before, double the time that that sample will be playing and it will still be playing back at 48, which is, that's, that's really important when you start warping and morphing samples. So giving yourself that higher kind of frequency and higher quality could be an advantageous move and then you can downsample later on. Now down here, it's entirely up to you what you want to do with you know, high quality resampling, with adjusting the layer volumes according to the velocity layers that we might have set up over here. I'm gonna leave both of those ticked. It's not really gonna to do too much now, but this is the really cool feature. Remove audio after loop out. This is the trimming the fat section. Essentially, anything after the loop out is literally never going to be played in your sampler. Ever. The reason for that is that when you hold that sample down, you're not going to get to the end of that sample. It's going to hit the loop point, And then when it hits the end of the loop point, it's going to go back to the beginning of the loop point and so on and so on. It's just going to keep circling around that thing. So you're never going to use that section. So why have it there? Why inflate your library with this extra sound? So chop it out, get rid of it. So I'll click OK there. And at that point, it asked me where would I like to store it? I'd find my file, I hit save, and it would export all those files. So I have my contact and my files over here at the ready. Let's load up a new instrument just to test these out. I'm gonna open up the mapping editor and I'm gonna grab all of these files, but I'm just gonna uncheck this last one here. It's like a sort of analytics or reference file. It's a text file, essentially. It's not really doing anything. It's nothing that we need right now. I'm gonna drag all of these in, drop them in, and then I'm gonna do my auto mapping tools. So my auto map setup, C1, you know, any part of the file name that has C1 or this last part of the file, which is going to be the note number, will make that the root key. I'll hit apply a few times just to make sure it sticks. And then we'll jump in and do the auto map section and auto spread key ranges via the root keys. That way it's putting all the samples on the right note and spreading them all out so that every note on the keyboard works. If any of that was too fast or too quick, check out the link below for my free contact tutorial series. All 16 videos take you through the whole process of building a sample library from scratch, right from recording through to scripting and interface. So if that's something you're keen on and you'd like to learn more about contact, that could be a great playlist for you. Check it out below. All right, let's just play a chord. Pretty cool, they're all just looping there. And if I deselect all of these and just select one of them and jump into the wave editor, you can see that loop is already on and that's come from sample robot. And you can see it's just chopped off there at the end, there's no loop out. There's no note out section there at all. You'll also know there's no fade in or fade out. And that's actually because the file has baked in the fade in and fade out, the crossfade. So literally there's no fade in and fade out being managed here. It was all done in sample robot and then it's printed the audio file as is. So it's all ready to go. So it's definitely not a good idea to adjust these loops at all once they're here. If you've got a problem, it's better to go back to sample robot, re-export and bring it back into contact because this audio file is not what it seems once it's here. So definitely don't adjust these loops. But there we have it, a working instrument, a really easy thing to do, and another kind of time-saving exercise from Sample Robot in the, in the case of sampling. I can't speak highly enough of this program. It's really cool. It has some quirks, it has some funny things, but the, as the support from Christian has been fantastic. I believe he's the person who actually made Sample Robot and he's the one that keeps responding to my support requests. So thank you very much, Christian. And it's fantastic to have that support. There are always new things that I think that they're working on. There's little tweaks that they'll probably fix, but it's a really, really solid program that saves so much time and has actually brought a little bit of joy back to the process of recording arbitrary samples. That's hard to do. It's pretty boring sometimes. So there we have it, a quick tutorial there on how to do this if you're interested. If you haven't seen Sample Robot before, check it out. Check out this channel if you like it as well and give us a thumbs up or a subscribe to follow along as well. Otherwise though, I will catch you in the next one.